controversy last night here at Marlins Park. First, the base hit it, the, the ball hit in the right field, and then this controversial play. Did the play uh, plate get blocked or did it not? The initial call was out. After review, safe. Mike Redmond very upset the Marlins manager, but it stood, and the Reds tied the game. Right after that, this hit by Ryan Ludwig to center field. Drove home two, and the Reds took a 3-1 to one lead. And then, of course, when the Reds lead late in the game, it's up to Aroldis Chapman. Chapman came on, and he did the job in the bottom of the ninth inning, getting the strikeout, ending the game, and ending the Reds' nine-game road losing streak with a 3-1 to one win here last night. Now here from Marlins Park in Miami, it is game two of this four-game series, the Reds and the Marlins. You'll see it all right here on Fox Sports Ohio. And hi, and a pleasant good evening, everyone, and welcome to Reds Baseball. Jim Couch along with Chris Welsh. Well, Chris, certainly controversy last night, controversy after the game, controversy again today as everybody is voicing their opinion about what's going on. But what we can say about this is that the Reds, with the win last night, will try to make it two in a row tonight, and they'll send the big man, Matt Latos, well, to the Marlins. they needed that win last night to break a long road losing streak that they had going. Of course, Johnny Cueto was up to the task. He only gave up set one run in his outing last night, and you hope that Matt Latos, a South Florida kid grown up who marveled at the Marlins. He remembers kids like our guys like Chucky Carr and Jeff Conine. Well, here's what he has done overall this season. Two and three and eight starts. Remember, he started on the disabled list to get the year going. But he's a guy that in his past has pitched against the Marlins before. And in the time that he's pitched against the Marlins, especially recently, he's done very well. Throw out the earned run average. Throw out the win-loss record. His last two starts against the Marlins have been lights out. And I expect to see the same kind of Matt Latos here this evening. Now, his mound opponent tonight will make his National League debut. He was acquired yesterday in a six-player deal from the Houston Astros. That is Jared Cosart. Well, Jared Cosart was at one time the number one prospect the Philadelphia Phillies had. And they thought he was going to be a part of their rotation for a long time. He was trained to Houston and then just yesterday traded here to Miami. Interesting thing that he faced the Miami Marlins just about a week ago. So they're very familiar with him, but now he's donning their uniform to pitch for them in their home park in a matchup of a couple of right-handers here tonight. Well, the Reds, if they can get the win tonight, would push their record to above the 500 mark. We'll step aside. When we come back, we talked about the play reviewed last night. MLB responds today. Jim Day has more on that.
Baseball on Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by your Ford dealer. Ford, go further. By Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. Hot, sticky day in South Florida. Marlins Park. The roof closes. Beautiful in here. I'm Jim Day. Not only last night's play in the eighth inning is the talk around town here, but a talk all around Major League Baseball today. Let's take you back. It's part of our Elk and Elk storylines brought to you by Elk and Elk. Serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. The Reds score on this play originally scored as an out under review. They called him safe because they felt Mathis, the catcher, was blocking the plate per the new rule instituted into Major League Baseball this year. It became such a big deal as you see Redmond, who was kicked out of the game, arguing the call vehemently. But it was such a big deal that they released a statement today, did MLB, basically saying they know both parties are going to be upset on either side of this argument. But they, they went on to say, we are continuously out evaluating the application of the new rule, and we anticipate a full review with all appropriate parties in the offseason in order to determine whether any changes should be made. We also recognize that the exorbitant length of last night's review, six minutes, ten seconds, which was more than three times the season average must be avoided in the future. That said, the most important goal of this rule has been to eliminate dangerous collisions at home plate, and it cannot be disputed that the rule has been very effective towards achieving this purpose. All the catchers I have talked to, including Brian Pena and Devin Mazzaracco today, do not like the rule. They'd like to go back to the way it was called, and they said if you want to be, if you don't want to get hit, don't be a catcher. They would rather get run over than try to avoid the baseline like last night's play. Fishing for another win. Reds try for two in a row in South Florida. The Marlins get set to play game two of this four game series. The Reds a winner here last night, three to one, so they've now won six in a row against this Marlins club, making his National League debut. Jared Cosart, he delivers the first pitch of this game to Billy Hamilton, and it misses up and away for a ball. Now, those are the numbers on Jared Cosart with the Houston Astros. That's where he started the season this year when he was traded over a year or so ago. From the Philadelphia Phillies in a deal that sent Hunter Pence the other way. Hard thrower averages about 94 95 with a fastball. 
What a whirlwind 24 hours it's been for this fellow. Yeah, it really has. I mean, he's a guy that uh, actually calls Florida his home since his years with the Philadelphia Phillies were spent up in the Clearwater area. He made Tampa his home, so he's now back in his home state, although he was raised in Texas. And he certainly liked being with the Houston Astros. Yeah, he's from League City, Texas, which is right near Houston. He says he grew up a Houston Astros fan, including their trip to the World Series, what, almost 10 years ago now. And he gets a good start for the Marlins with a strikeout of Billy Hamilton. Here's the rest of the Reds lineup put forth by Brian Price tonight and brought to you by Meyer. Hamilton, Bruce back from his three-day uh, leave from the club on the bereavement list. Then Frazier, Mazzarocco, Ludwig, and Schumacher. Negron gets the start at third. Cozart, the shortstop. And batting ninth for the Reds is Matt Latos. So here's Jay Bruce. Missed the last three games due to the death of his grandfather down in Texas on the bereavement list. Rejoining the club here today. Comes in at 215 with 10 home runs, 42 runs batted in. The first thing that you're going to notice about Jared Cosard is the fact that almost every one of his fastballs cuts, meaning it will run in towards a left hander and away from a right hander. The next thing you'll notice is that his number two pitch he likes a lot, and that's a knuckle curveball, but very much like the pitcher that we saw last night in Tom Kohler. He does not throw too many of those. Cosard normally doesn't throw a lot of change ups. In fact, the Marlins just faced him a little while ago. In fact, I think about a week ago. And when he faced the Marlins, he, he threw 65 fastballs, 23 curves, and only seven changeups. So that's pretty much what he likes to do in that order. Fastball, curve, change. When you take a look at that jersey uh, button job there by Jared, and he oh. kind of messed that up a little bit well, right there, the, didn't he? You know, the fashion police. Will be out on that one. He's a little nervous getting his uniform on today. It's first time ever in a Marlins uniform, but he gets Bruce here, so he's retired the first two and will face Frazier with the bases empty. And look at the defense for the Marlins, brought to you by your four dealers behind Cosart. They have Yelich out in left, Ozuna in center, Stanton in right. The infield is McGee at third, Echevarria at short, Valdespin at second, Jones at first. Cosart caught by Jared Saltalamacchia. He's their main catcher, although he was not in the game last night, thus not involved in the controversy at the plate in the eighth inning. On a broken bat ground ball to first, Jones will feed Cosart, and the inning is over. The Reds go down 1-2-3 against Cosart, making his National League debut. in Miami as Mike Redmond looks on he was ejected from the game of course last night due to that eighth inning controversy and uh, boy everybody's talked a lot about what what he uh, his feelings were what everybody's thoughts were about that play last night as you guys pointed out in the pregame show and Jim again just before we got started MLB did release that statement today saying that they are continuing to review rule 7.13 
And uh, if changes are to be uh, made, they will look at that in the offseason, potentially make those. Here's the lineup for the Marlins tonight, brought to you by Meyer. Yelich, Valdespin, and Stanton at the top. McGee, Jones, and Ozuna in the middle. Salta Lamacchia, Echevarria, and Cosart. The bottom three against the right hander, Matt Latos. Uh, Matt Latos making start number nine, of course, start of the season on the DL, but he's been very good, and he is some kind of a gamer. He's only given up three home runs and a batting average against down in the 180. So when you combine those two qualities, you're going to keep the ball in the ballpark, not give up very many hits. Let's hope the Reds get him some runs and a W here tonight. And he's looking for his first win since the All-Star break. He's made two starts since the break at Milwaukee in a 5-2 loss and then at home against Washington in a 4-2 loss. He pitched very well against the Nationals. Three runs, three hits in six innings. That one tips off his glove. Redirecting his movement is Schumacher, and he'll make the play. That's a 1-4-3 put out on Christian Yelich to get the bottom of the first going. Reds defensively look like this. Brought to you by your four dealers. In the outfield, Ludwig, Hamilton, and Bruce. The infield, Negron gets his first big league start at third. Zach Cozart at short. Schumacher at second. Frazier at first. Latos throws to Devin Mezzarocco. So we have Cozart at short. Cozart, the pitcher. We have Negron making his first start at third base. And his second consecutive start for the Reds. And we have Jordani Valdes being at the plate, the second baseman of the Marlins. 243 with a couple of home runs since being called up two weeks ago from their AAA club at New Orleans. First pitch swinging and a base hit into right. Valdes being hitless in the game last night. He's on for the one out single here. Now this is the tale of really coming into this series a couple of teams that are going in complete opposite directions the Reds since the All-Star break have been really not very good at all. They've lost 10 of the 13 ball games they play their batting average as a team is around 190. They've only scored an average of two runs a game. Meanwhile the Marlins have played so well that they actually became buyers at the trading deadline and we are seeing the product of that trade that they made with the Houston Astros tonight. They're relying on Kosar to be a guy that helps them down the stretch as they try to get back into you know a legitimate spot in this National League pennant race. Right now they're six games back but they're seven and three in their last ten. I made that six player deal we talked about with Houston three going three coming and two of the three that came over this way are on the big league roster. We're seeing one starting on the mound Kosar. The other is uh, Kike Hernandez, he's an infielder, outfielder, utility player. He's on the active roster for this team as well tonight. On a play by Stanton, who comes into this game tied with Anthony Rizzo of the Cubs with 25 home runs and leads the National League in RBIs with 73. An average of 293. Stanton, of course, made the throw from right field on the broken bat fly ball by Frazier in the eighth, which led to the controversy on the tag at the plate. In the air and maybe playable near the screen and there to haul it in is Mezzarocco. Good concentration by the Reds catcher to retire Stanton for out number two. You know when you're playing in a, in a stadium that has a roof on it whether it's retractable or just a fixed roof stadium and the one thing you can't do especially as a visiting player is take your eye off the ball because when you do you sometimes look up and all you see is rafters you're not sure where that ball is it's not like looking up into the night or even up into a daytime sky. So he had to kind of feel his way where he was to that back screen. Never took his eye off the baseball and made a made a catch on a little pop up for the second out of the inning. Whenever I hear people talk about looking up into these roofs like this, I always remember the story uh, that was told about the Astrodome when it first opened up, and it was uh, a white ceiling, right? So players would look up into that, and the ball would be white. The ceiling was white. Who knew where the ball was? I think the first time they opened the Astrodome, they had natural grass, and they had actually clear glass up there and it became too hot and too uh, the grass didn't live anyway of course that's where they put 
artificial turf in and they painted those windows white. So that was very difficult to pick the ball up. But even after they they darken those windows that was one spot that you could look up once and see the ball look down to see where you are look up again and not know where that ball is. Well there are any number of uh, domed or retract really retractable roof stadiums around both the National and the American League. Into right field Bruce sliding had to go off his glove it's going to drop for a base hit running with two out was Valdez Bean. he'll end up at third and the Marlins have them at the corners with two men out. Uh, doesn't matter how hard you hit it obviously it hit, it's where you hit it and Jay Bruce looks like he's almost got a chance to make this play. Watch how he slides in here though he's not going to slide with his you know head first he's going to kind of slide with it and making sure that he doesn't roll over on that on that glove of his and hurt his wrist. Remember years ago in New York is when he injured his wrist. In fact he fractured his wrist on a on a play that was very similar to that. Looked like it hit maybe off the thumb of the glove drops for a base hit for Casey McGee. And now it's Garrett Jones who's swinging a pretty good bat as of late an eight game hitting streak bats with two on and two men out one for three with a single last night. Marlins trying to jump in front early in this game. Well, Latos is one guy that does not struggle at all during the first inning. In fact, this is odd for a starter. Usually the numbers are reversed. If they, you give up your runs early on, then you get your sea legs. Tonight, though, he's in danger of giving one up with a base hit here. Well, he's not given up a run in either the first inning or the second inning in his eight starts so far this year. Valdez Bean is the man down at third base trying to end that number. Garrett Jones at the plate. Trying to drive him in. Garrett with 11 home runs, 41 runs batted in on the year. 268 average with runners in scoring position. In the air for Billy Hamilton on the run is Billy. He'll get there and hold.